Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK. Welcome to my channel. If you like it, like, subscribe, share. And uh, for my existing subscribers, just want to thank you for your support. Um, today's video, um, somebody sent me a video and it is about military robots and they sent it to me and I looked at it and I thought, hmm, I thought it was real because, to be honest, it's been kind of in the offing when they're talking about how they're going to train robots to kill human beings. So I looked at it when I first looked at it, I assumed it was real. And then I got another video to show me how they did it. But then I, me being nosy, I went and searched for military robots. And apparently there is an element of truth, even though that this particular um, video is not representative of an actual situation. So I'm going to show it to you because I think it's relevant on what could be planned for the future. And I will then read a little bit about what I found out. Okay. Don't think there's any sound. Oh, there's a sound. What this is meant to prove is that despite any kind of disorientation, the robot falling over, any kind of distraction, it is still going to shoot on target. That is what this is proving. Okay, I'm just going to show you a little bit more. Now that's showing how indestructible it is. It's also showing that it is trained not to hit certain targets. These have algorithms in it as well, and they are going to be trained how to, what to hit from what not to hit. In this particular um, situation, it's trained not to hit a human, just to hit targets and bottles or something else. So those men are taking a risk, aren't they? They've got so much faith in that robot that they're willing to stand in front of it, knowing that it will not kill them because it hasn't been trained to kill humans at this point.
Yeah, I think what else is supposed to show that regardless of how they hit him or knock him over, he's not going to um, shoot them back. I think that's what they're trying to prove in this video. Anyway, now I'm going to show you how what they why they're claiming is fake, but I'm going to also read something that proves that there is an element of truth to that situation. Okay. Done. Okay, so we released this Boston Dynamics video over the weekend and tricked a lot more people than we thought we would. I just want to break it down for you guys real quick. It's almost funnier in a new way, but more than anything else, it gives you guys a look as to what we did to make this video a hit. See, that doesn't really wash with me, to be honest. I mean, they're trying to show you how it works, but to be honest, no, I don't even know why they have to keep hitting it. Why do they have to keep hitting it? What is the purpose of that? Anyway, um, apparently in Daejeon, a city in central South Korea, South Korea is a hub for military robot firms. Um, the Super Aegis 2 has a range of some four kilometers and a machine gun powerful enough to stop a truck. The Super Aegis II, South Korea's best-selling automated turret, first revealed in 2010. That's how long it's been out. So you can imagine how they've upgraded it since then. Is one of a new breed of automated weapons, able to identify, track and destroy a moving target from a great distance, theoretically without human intervention. The machine has proved popular and profitable. Apparently, it will not fire without first receiving an OK from a human. The human operator must first enter a password into the computer system to unlock the turret's firing ability. Then they must give the manual input that permits the turret to shoot. John Sok Park, a senior research engineer for Doddam, D-O-D-A-A-M, the turret's manufacturer works in the robotic surveillance division of the company, which is based in the Yusong Tech district of Daejeon. It employs 150 staff, most of whom, like Park, are also engineers. Our original version had an auto-firing system, he explains, but all of our customers asked for safeguards to be implemented. Technologically, it wasn't a problem for us, but they were concerned the gun might make a mistake. Dodan claims to have sold more than 30 units since launch, each one as a part of an integrated defense system costing more than 40 million US dollars, which is 28 million pounds apiece. The turret is currently inactive used in numerous locations in the Middle East, including three air bases in the United Arab Emirates, Al Dafra, Al Safran and Al Minad, the Royal Palace in Abu Dhabi, an armory in Qatar, and numerous other unspecified airports, power plants, pipelines and military air bases elsewhere in the world.
The past 15 years has seen a concerted development of such automated weapons and drones. The US military uses similar semi-autonomous robots designed for bomb disposal and surveillance. In 2000, US Congress ordered that one third of military ground vehicles and deep strike aircraft should be replaced by robotic vehicles. Six years later, hundreds of back Packbot tactical mobile robots were deployed in Iraq and Afghanistan to open doors in urban combat, lay optical fiber, defuse bombs, and perform other hazardous duties that would have otherwise been carried out by humans. As early as 2005, the New York Times reported the Pentagon's plans to replace soldiers with autonomous robots. So that's why I'm saying there's an element of truth in what we've just seen there, even though that they claim is not real, is fake. But the principle is real, if you see what I mean. Um, it's easy to understand why robots reduce the need for humans in combat and therefore save the lives of soldiers, sailors and pilots. What parent would send their child into a war zone if a robot could do the job instead? It's what they're programmed to do, that's my concern. But while devices such as the Super Aegis 2 that are able to kill autonomously have existed for more than a decade, as far as the public knows, no fully autonomous gun-carrying robots have been used in active service. Yang Chang Song, Dodang's Managing Director of Strategy Planning, says automated weapons will be the future. We were right. The evolution has been quick. We've already moved from remote control combat devices to what we are approaching now, smart devices that are able to make their own decisions. Need is the mother of invention, he says. We live in a unique setting. We have a potent and ever-present enemy nearby. Because of this constant threat, we have a tradition of developing a strong military and innovative supporting technology in this country. Our weapons don't sleep like humans must. They can see in the dark like humans can't. Our technology therefore plugs the gaps in human capability. Things become more complicated when the machine is placed in a location where friend and foe could potentially mix. Currently, the weapon has no way to distinguish between friend or foe. However, in the video I just showed you, it seems to be able to differentiate between a human being who it's meant to kill and one he's not. Um, engineers claim that those that they are close to eliminating the need for human intervention. The Super Aegis 2 is accomplished as finding potential targets within an area. Then thanks to its numerous cameras, the gun software can discern whether or not a potential target is wearing explosives under their shirt. Within a decade, I think, we will be able to computationally identify the type of enemy based on their uniform, he says. Once a weapon is able to tell a friend from foe and to automatically fire upon the latter, it's, it's a short step to full automation. And as soon as a weapon can decide who and when to kill, Robocop S science fiction comes, becomes fact. I wonder what they're being taught though. Likewise, a fully autonomous version of the Predator drone may have to decide whether or not to fire on a house whose occupants include both enemy soldiers and civilians. How do you, as a software engineer, construct a set of rules for such a device to follow in these scenarios? That's what somebody was asking them. This is the reason that landmines were banned by the Ottawa Treaty in 1997. They were, in the most basic way imaginable, autonomous weapons that would explode whoever stepped on them. At Dodan Park has what appears to be a sound compromise. When we reach the point at which we have a turret that can make fully autonomous decisions by itself, we will ensure that the artificial intelligence adheres to the relevant army's manual. We will follow that description and incorporate those rules of engagement into our system. Regardless of what possible 
regardless of what's possible in the future, automated machine guns capable of firing, tracking, warning and eliminating human targets, absent of any human interactions, already exist in the world. The Biological Technologies Office in Arlington, Virginia, created in 2014, is the newest in Dharma's sixth main division. This is the office headed by Justine Sanchez. One purpose of the office is to restore and maintain warfighter abilities by various means, including many that emphasize neurotechnology, applying engineering principles to the biology of the nervous system. So while the robots in this video may not be the real thing, they are mimicking the development of what is coming in the future. Well, what is already here, to be honest. So yeah, I thought I'd share that with you. I don't know how many of you, I'd like to hear your comments on that actually. Okay then, bye-bye.